you two have had a very special bond over the last few years, haven't you? Yeah, we have. Um, today was uh, very emotional um, to see JT walk out and get the guard of honour that he deserved um, to, and to take his little daughter along it as well. You know, it, it was an overwhelming emotion, but one that he can look back in years to come of a couple of battles. We say battles there, major battles in life that he's had to undergo himself. And he's come out the other side and I personally think it's a, the right decision for him to retire um, because your health is your wealth at the end of the day. And I know uh, pastures uh, new are gonna be around the corner for him and it's an exciting time. It's um, the end of an era and the start of a, a, a new one for himself and his family. But from a friendship point of view, 100%, I, I dropped him a message this morning just saying, if you need me day or night, don't hesitate to call me. He mentioned in his interview to me uh, during the week that he confided in yourself and Jim McNulty uh, over the last few weeks and months. Did that mean a lot to you that he, he's been able to strike up that type of relationship with you? Yeah. It's, but that's all, all friendship, all friendship is, and it's got closer over the years, no, no question of a doubt about that. Um, but JT came to me, it would have been at the end of last season, saying he's right at the top of the mountain, and he asked me, shall I retire? And I said, I personally don't think you should, mate. Um, I think you should come back, give it a go, see how you feel, because he owes a, a lot to football for his health and all of what it's given him and he gave it his best for four or six months and it wasn't wasn't there at the end of the day so he made a, a calculated and educated decision towards retiring for himself and as I said previously for for his own health and, um, and, and the family. Is he one of the most inspirational people that you've met in life? Yeah, no question of a doubt about it. Um, there's a story for you. And first, second time battling the big C, right? Every day he'd come in with a smile on his face. And people worry about minuscule things that you're not even going to consider in five years' time. He was still positive, upbeat, outgoing, himself all of the way through it. And I know that he said that people being themselves around him helped him and he was always himself through the whole process and you know I try and draw on inspiration for him to show other people wow look what this guy went through overcome it and reached that mountain top of pure emotion on the last day of a season physically mentally emotionally what it did for the football club but also as part of a story you know you couldn't write that story the way that it ended so inspirational yeah 100 percent but also a man's man a happy outgoing incredible human being father husband you can use all of the plurals on the planet what an amazing human being are you and the rest of the players going to miss him around the, the changing rooms because he's quite a character as well <laughs> He's an infectious character, no question of a doubt about that. Um, the area's gonna be gonna be missed. Um, but not taking anything away from him. There's a saying in football, ships in the night. People come and go real, real fast, but his 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 um, legacy, his history with the football club, with the manager, that's gonna live long for a long, long time and I'm guessing when the young kids get a little bit older, they start having children who support Rochdale, they'll tell them about Joe Thompson and grandparents, parents. It's just going to be a cycle. It's in the history of the football club now. And, and that's what, again, another family, a family orientated football club. It's wow. That's amazing. Another story to go with Rochdale Football Club.